the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to say run is equal to false or is equal to true. I'll always do that. We're going to say clock equals pygame dot time dot clock uh, capital C here. My bad. Okay. Next, we're going to say n equals network, right? Because we're importing network up here. We're going to do a very similar thing to what we did before in all the previous tutorials where we just connect initially by doing that initialization. And then we're going to say p equals actually player equals n dot get p, right? And you should already have that method. Um, it's just returning that uh, like connect what we connected to, right? So when we connect, we get the player number, which is either zero or one. So we need that. Now it reminds me, it's going to be a number. So we got to put an int around this so that we can compare it with other integers. Okay. And last, we're going to just print just so we have this you are player player. Now this just indicates to us like when we initially run if we know we're zero or one just to make sure everything's working fine. Now we're gonna make a while loop. We're gonna say this is our main game loop. We're gonna say while run, and then in here we're gonna do clock dot tick sixty. Very similar to what we've done before, guys. I'm gonna start adding some new stuff in a second. Okay, so now that we've done this, it's time to um, start actually connecting and asking the server for information. So what we should be doing here is every frame, we should be asking the server to send us the game, especially at the beginning of this loop, because right now we haven't actually created a game class, right? We need to get that from the server. So we're connected now. We know what player we are. So now what we can do is we can try to get that from the server. So to do that, we're going to say game equals n dot send get. And that's literally as easy as it is. We just need to do an accept and then we'll just uh, what do you call it? We'll say run equals false and we'll say print couldn't get game. Okay. And the reason we're doing this and then we're going to break as well is because when we, if we send this and we don't get a response from the server, that means the game doesn't exist. And what, that, what, if that happens, well then what we should do is we should exit out of this game. We should print saying we couldn't get the game. And then we should try to reconnect or start a new game with someone else. So this main function is going to be like the actual game running. But once we exit out of this main function, we're going to go to a main menu and the main menu will allow us to um, choose like who we want to play against and a bunch of other stuff as well. Okay. You guys will see that later. Okay. So that's how we do that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say if game dot both went. Now, what we're going to do here is if both players went, well, we're not waiting for anything now. We need to see which one won. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check which player won and we're going to uh, display that message accordingly on the screen. So what we're going to do initially is we're going to redraw the window. The reason we do this right away is because we want to make sure that if both, both players went, we're updating um, the window and on the window, it'll check like if both players have gone like in this redraw window and it'll draw the player moves for us. So you guys will see how that works in a second. We're going to do a delay a new pi game dot time dot delay 200. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try game, uh, sorry, game equals n dot send reset. Now why we're doing this obviously is because well, if both players went, we need to tell the server to reset um, those player moves, right? So inside a game, if we call reset went, we're just going to reset it so that we were able to play the next round after. Okay. We're going to accept, uh, except, of course I can't spell that. And we're going to say run equals false. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to print couldn't get game. Couldn't get game. And then we're going to break. Okay. Now under this, so after we send that reset, now what we want to do is we want to display a message on the screen indicating whether player one won or player two won, or like if you won or if the other player won. So the way we're going to do this, and it's actually a decent amount of lines is because we have to like render font and then we got to determine where we're going to draw the font and what's going to be on the font. So we're first just going to start by defining a font. So we'll say font equals pi game dot font dot SYS font. Okay. In here we'll say comic sans font size. Let's go 90 for this one. Now we're going to say if game dot winner. And remember, if we go to game, winner is going to respond to us with either a zero, a one or a negative one. So it, you have to check if winner is one and 
player, so whatever our current player is 1, then we're going to say you won. If winner is 1, but the current player is 0, we're going to say you lost, right? So that's how we can check this. So to do that, we're going to say if game.winner equals equals 1 and player equals equals 1. And remember, we got that player from the server, so we know if we're either player 0 or player 1 on the client side. And uh, is actually, do I need an and? Uh, oh, sorry. Or. That's what we need to do. Or game.winner equals equals 0 and player equals equals 0. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to check if this player won. So we know what player we are and we know what player won. So if that coincide, like what player we are and the player that won, then we'll print out and we'll say or we'll put on the screen you won, right? Telling that client they won. So we'll say text equals font.render and then in here we simply say uh, you won exclamation point and then we can just do one and then a color and obviously a color we just do like red like that okay on the screen okay so else um, actually l if and now we're going to check if they lost well actually i think we can, we can do this easier we're going to say l if uh game dot winner equals equals negative one so if it if we tied what we'll do here is we'll say text equals font dot render and we'll just say tie game exclamation point one again we'll put that in red okay and now else so if we didn't win and we didn't tie we must have lost so we can literally just copy this and we'll just say you lost uh, as the text okay so you lost dot 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 sweet and now what we're gonna do is just render that font put it on the screen so or not render it just put it on the screen so say win dot blit uh, text and now we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before uh, to get it in the middle of the screen just be a little bit easier so we're just gonna say uh, I believe do I need another brackets no I don't think so we'll say width over 2 and that's the width of the actual screen minus text dot get underscore uh, width we need those brackets over 2 we're gonna do comma and now we'll just do the same thing with height so we'll say height over 2 minus uh, text dot get underscore height over two. Okay, so that's gonna put it in the middle of the screen. We're gonna update the display, high game dot display dot update, and we're going to delay. So pie game dot time dot delay, and I'm gonna put 2000 for two seconds. You guys can put whatever you want in here. Okay, so let's break this down really quickly. If both players went, that means now we get to check who won. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna redraw the window. We're going to what do you call it? Uh, apply a small delay of 0.2 seconds just so that we can see what both players did before it immediately pops up who won and who lost. So actually, let's make this delay half a second. We're going to send to the server reset. So we're going to reset both players went so that the next time that we start playing, we can both players are allowed to move. We're going to say run equals false. If this doesn't happen, if this doesn't work, we're going to print couldn't get a game. We're going to break um, now. Otherwise, so like if this worked we sent the game we're going to create a font we're going to check who won so either we won we tied or we lost we're going to display that to the screen we're going to delay for two seconds and then we're going to play the game again after okay awesome so we're almost done uh we're just going to add this uh pretty actually complex for loop in here so what we're going to do now is we're going to say for event in pi game dot event dot get very standard for pi game you've probably seen this before i'm going to say if event dot type equals equals pi game dot quit then what we're going to do is going to say run equals false and we're going to say pi game dot quit so this just means that they hit that little x button at the top of the corner now we're going to check if they actually press their mouse button down so this is how we're going to check if they pressed a button this is what we're going to do now let's say if event dot type equals equals pi game dot mouse button down then what we'll do is we'll get the mouse position to do that we're gonna say if we're gonna say pi game dot pause uh pi game dot mouse dot get underscore pause so what we're doing here is we're checking if they press right middle or left mouse button if they do let's get the mouse position now for every single button, we're gonna check if we click that button. If we did, we're gonna do something accordingly. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is gonna say for button in BTNs. Remember we define buttons up here. Then what we're gonna say is if BTN 
dot click pause now if they did click the position there's a few things we need to check oh and also we need to check this sorry and game dot connected sorry so what this game dot connected is doing is just making sure that it's not going to let us press like rock paper scissors unless we both players are on so that's just so that we don't run into an issue where we can make a move before the other player uh connects okay so just add this and game dot connected what we'll do now is we're going to check what our current player is because this is going to determine how we send a move so what we're going to do now is we're going to say if player equals equals zero if not game dot uh what do you call it p1 went then we'll do something otherwise so we'll just put uh else here and we'll check if not p2 game dot p2 went okay so what we're doing now and i haven't coded the rest of it yet is we're just going to check if we press one of the buttons so remember we have that click method in our button that tells us if we clicked on it so if we do click on it and we're connected to the game what we're going to do is we're going to check if our current player is zero or one now what we're doing is if we're player zero well we're going to check if player zero has gone yet if they've gone obviously we're not going to let them make a move right because they've already made that move they can't change their move once they made it same thing with player two so if we're not player zero we're player one clearly so that means we're going to check if player two has gone yet and if they haven't gone we'll allow them to move okay so what we'll do in here now is we're going to make a move now to make a move remember we just need to send to the network our move so we're just going to say n.send or to the server sorry and all we're going to do is we're just going to send the text of the button now the text of the button will be rock paper or scissors right and that's precisely the move that we're going to make depending on what button we're clicking so it's a really nice dynamic way to do that now um, once we've done that right so if we go to server what happens here is if we send that we're going to play that move and we're going to update it on the game so that the other client when it gets that game board again will have that updated move you guys will see how this works in a second okay so that's working well now all we need to do is just add in line with this right here we're going to say redraw window we're going to give it win we're going to give it uh what else do i need to give it game and p which stands for our current player and that's actually it for and make sure you just call our calling main down here at the end of client that's actually it for this main function so now all we need to do is do redraw window and we're really close to done so we got another like 20 lines uh and then once we do that we're actually finished this game and then we can start testing it out and talking about some more things we can add to it okay so what we're gonna do now is yeah it's actually quite a bit of work is we're gonna draw all the stuff on the screen now so we've done all the logic aspect of it down here in this main function but now we need to draw everything so it's more tedious than it is difficult but we're just going to first start by checking if not game.connected now this just means if we have not yet had the other player connect then all we're going to do is we're just going to print on the screen waiting for player and we're not going to show anything else so to do that we're going to say font equals pi game dot font dot sys font name obviously is comic sans and then the how big should it be let's make it 80 okay and then we're going to say text equals font dot render in here we're going to say waiting for player dot 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 one color let's do nice red and let's actually add true here for bold okay okay so we're going to blit this on the screen um so to do this we'll say win dot blit and we're going to do again that same i know tedious thing to get in the middle of the screen so we're just going to say width over two minus text dot get underscore width and then we're going to say height over two minus text dot get underscore height uh and actually we need to make sure we're dividing both the width and the height by two so let's do that okay that's it for that now else so this means if we actually are connected both players are in now it's time to start drawing the real stuff on the screen so we need to draw that what was it so actually let me pop up client for you guys so you can see what it looks like uh let's run server rotten client client right so if we want to see the client what we should do is we need to draw this 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 and then the three buttons okay so we're gonna have to do these four texts and the thing is these texts need to change um, on like they're going to be different depending on what player is looking at it right so for example here it's showing us what our move is but notice it just says locked in for opponents it doesn't tell us what our move is 
and with the other players movements right so we need to do that as well okay so to do that uh let's start um we're gonna make another font i'm gonna say font equals pi game dot font dot sys font comic sans size of this font let's make it 60 and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say text equals font dot render and we're gonna do your move so we're gonna start by just doing your move and like opponent move because those aren't gonna change they're gonna stay the same no matter what and for that we're gonna do one and the color I had there was like a nice cyan I think right so we'll do this um, feel free to change the color I know it probably doesn't look the best and let's just split this at a static position on the screen so we'll say text and let's go 80 200 okay all right next so actually still in this else statement we're gonna copy this um, just sorry what am I doing just this text and this win part and we're gonna put it down here and say your move we're gonna say opponent move is that how you spell that uh, let's change that to opponents and actually let's just get rid of moves to be too big opponents and same color except we're just gonna change the X value so that we draw it at uh, what do you call it 380 like that okay so that's it for your move and opponents next what we need to do is a bit more complicated because now we have to draw what the actual moves are 